I think I've said it. I think early childhood is of absolutely vital importance. In the WHO Commission on Social Determinants of Health, we gave our report the title Closing the Gap in a Generation. We were trying to convey that if you start now, you can close the health gap in a generation. Jonathan Scher, who's here, has been filling my head with the importance of starting now means starting pre-conception as well as during pregnancy, not only in the early years. It means taking a whole of life approach. It's a great pleasure now to uh, introduce Murray Todd, member of the Scottish Parliament, who's Minister for Early Years and Childhood and the Child Care and a passionate Scottish rugby fan. Thank you. Thanks, Professor Marmot, for that um, lovely introduction and a very warm welcome back to Scotland. I'm very grateful for the close and supportive interest that you've taken in Scotland's ACES journey in recent years. I'm delighted to be here today to share with you my reflections on how Scotland is taking action on ACES and how communities can respond to childhood adversity. This event was oversubscribed which indicates just how much interest there is in today's agenda. And I can already feel that tangible commitment and energy um, in this room this morning. I know that you're all here because you want to do all you can to prevent adverse childhood experiences and to mitigate the effects for those already um, having experienced um, childhood adversity right across Scotland's communities. And I'm really, really grateful for your input and I wholeheartedly share your ambition. I have to be in Parliament later this morning, unfortunately, so I have to leave straight after I've spoken. But I was really keen to join you for um, part of the session um, because I firmly believe in the importance of starting a dialogue with local communities and with those working in communities on how we can work together to prevent and respond to childhood adversity. From a personal point of view, the Resilience documentary had a huge impact on me, and I know I'm not unique in that. I've seen the way it's energized people living and working in different communities right across Scotland to look at what they can do differently to improve the lives of children and help those who've been affected by early life adversity. Now, some of you will know that I'm quite new to politics. I was only elected in 2016. And before that, I worked for 20 years as a mental health pharmacist, so I worked in, in a psychiatric hospital. Now, when I saw that film, Resilience, I thought, this isn't really anything new. We've kind of known this forever. Certainly, Freud knew it, that what happens to you in your early life goes with you throughout your life and can affect your health and well-being right into adulthood. So it isn't a particularly new concept, but what was new was that common language. And I have been in rooms where people have watched the film together. I've seen folk from a justice background and a health background and a social work background and an education background all coming together around and using the same common language. And that coming together is vitally important for us to unlock the solutions to this. Now, for someone like me, who is a mental health pharmacist, the physical basis of our emotions and our behavior is kind of, you know, that's what I did. I love, you know, I did love my neurotransmitters. <laughs> Somebody has to. <laughs> and I have to say, even I was really astonished. I had my light bulb moment during that film when I recognized, well, the film led me to recognize the link between adult obesity and childhood sexual abuse. And I thought all those years I worked as a health professional and the number of years I worked as a politician, 
that was never described as a public health issue with roots in childhood adversity. And the approaches taken to solve it were always things like education and exercise. And, you know, again, with my experience in mental health, I knew, I understood well that we, we don't always do the things that we know are good for us. So, you know, it's really um, a very powerful basis for understanding human behaviour, for understanding the physical basis for some of the outcomes that folk um, experience in adult life. And what I really liked about the film, and I'm not going to use a technical term here, was that it took away just a bit of that judginess that's there <laughs> when people experience adversity and make life choices later on that add to their adversity. So I liked that very much about the film. One of the best parts of being Minister for Children and Young People is having the absolute privilege of meeting a wide range of children and young people from lots of different backgrounds and hearing firsthand from them how they've overcome adversity and built resilience. From listening to their often difficult but inspiring stories, it's abundantly obvious that children need to feel loved, supported and respected in all that they do, whether they're at home, at school, taking part in sport or other activities in their communities. That is the basis for preventing childhood adversity and it's also the basis of mitigating it where it happens. We can all play a role. We first published our commitment to addressing ACEs in our programme for government in September 2017. It's anchored in our commitment to children's rights and our long-term national approach of getting it right for every child as well as about better supporting the adults affected by early life adversity. Getting it right for every child empowers services and families to work in partnership to address the needs of the children and young people early before they become a bigger problem. It's about services working together with the needs of the child or the young person right at the centre. It's about supporting the well-being of our children and young people and improving outcomes by offering the right help at the right time from the right people. The increased awareness of ACEs is really helpful for bringing people together right across different sectors and professions, working collaboratively to drive progress on early intervention and prevention. And the ACEs discourse has shone light on the way that childhood experiences impact the whole child's life, their biology, their physical and emotional development, their ability to learn, their ability to regulate their behaviour. It's also shone a light on the importance, the critical importance of relationships with trusted and supportive adults. And these issues are absolutely central to our drive to get it right for every child. Now I'm sometimes asked if our commitment to ACEs means we're solely looking at the 10 key adversities examined in the original ACE surveys. The answer is no. Our focus in government is on all types of adversity that impact children's healthy development. We're committed to embedding an understanding of ACEs right across government. And in our latest programme for government, we set out four key areas that we're taking action to address ACEs. Firstly, providing intergenerational support to parents, families and children to prevent ACEs occurring in the first place. Our child poverty delivery plan sets out the measures we're taking to support families on low incomes, support parents to sustain or access work and to cut the costs of the school day. We're investing £7.5 million to support innovative approaches to child poverty and we're investing over £125 million in 2018-19 to mitigate the worst impacts of the UK government welfare reform and to provide support to low-income families. We're providing new investment to support the mental well-being of pregnant and new mums and to work with infants and their parents or, parents or carers to prevent early difficulties escalating. We're expanding the Family Nurse Partnership to offer intensive support 
to every eligible young mother. And we're building new universal health visiting service that will give families better support and employing 500 extra health visitors to make it a reality. We're supporting children and parents by expanding the offer of early learning and childcare, by almost doubling the funded hours. We're going to reduce the burden of costs on families and by introducing more flexibility in how the funded hours can be used, we're going to ensure that it works for families. And the overarching main priority in that expansion is to provide high quality nurturing environments for play and development. At the heart of it, it's about improving the lives of these children to give all of our children the best start in life. The second area we're focusing on, our action on, is providing the right support at the right time for children and young people who've experienced ACEs, to reduce the negative impacts as soon as we possibly can and to help to build their resilience. In June last year, we announced a task force on children and young people's mental health, and that's reviewing our whole approach to mental health services, and it's backed by an initial investment of five million. We're investing in additional school nursing and counselling services to best support the most vulnerable children and young people. And we're investing £750 million through Attainment Scotland Fund to help to address issues that impact on a child's capacity to learn and thrive at school. This funding is helping schools to support children deal, who are dealing with emotional or social challenges. And we're providing £1.8 million to extend vital support to the families of prisoners and help those families deal with the issues that they face and access advice and assistance. Our third area of action is developing tra a trauma-informed workforce and service responses for children and adults. Those of you working in early years in education are already making huge differences with implementing nurture and trauma-informed approaches. And Education Scotland continue to support and promote these. Understanding childhood adversity means understanding that for some people, damaging early life experiences have lifelong consequences and they need support throughout their lives, both in childhood and in adulthood. And you'll hear later today about the Violence Reduction Unit's Navigator Programme and how it works with adults supporting them where they are to break the cycle of violence in their lives. Works underway by NHS Education for Scotland to implement the National Tra Trauma Training Programme, supporting people to work in ways which minimise distress, overcome barriers and build trust. And I know that some of you will have fed your expertise into the recent consultation exercise on the trauma training plan, which closed a few weeks ago. And thank you very much for taking your time to do that. This is part of our strong commitment to ensure that people working in frontline services and across the whole Scottish workforce better understand and respond to the needs of children and adults who have had adverse and traumatic experiences. Finally, the fourth area of action we've committed to, which is of particular relevance for today's um, event, is raising awareness right across society and supporting action across communities. Everyone here today has a role to play in this, working together with local communities and with those working in local communities to better understand, prevent and respond to childhood adversity. I know that lots of you have been working on this for a very long time in your own communities and beyond, and your efforts are hugely valuable. You bring a wealth of experience with you today. It's really heartening to see the way that the growing awareness of childhood adversity is spreading right across Scotland leading to real change on the ground. The work of local ACE hubs in raising awareness across Scotland is invaluable. For our part, the Scottish Government's working in partnership with many organisations, including those involved in the Scottish ACE hub, coordinated by our hosts today, NHS Scotland. 
the Hub's working to take forward collaborative actions in Scotland and also to support societal awareness and community involvement. NHS Scotland and the Scottish ACE Hub are developing work to support action right across communities and are engaging with the local ACE Hubs right across Scotland to understand their aims, what support might be helpful to them in the future. Importantly, that includes understanding what we, at a national level, can learn from the good work that's underway in communities right across Scotland. As you're all aware, responding to adversity and trauma means working in a way that works with rather than doing to people. It's about people, relationships, and taking a place-based approach. Policy and service design and delivery is increasingly focused on collaboration and on developing such relationship-based approaches. We continue to recognise that people and communities have the skills, knowledge and lived experience to develop their own solutions. From the ACES research, we know that having at least one trusted, stable and supportive relationship with an adult is one of the most important aspects of childhood resilience. Such a relationship can buffer adversity and communities across Scotland are the places where we need to create those opportunities for children experiencing adversity to develop those positive, trusting and supportive relationships. Now, no one sector or organisation alone can make the change we need to see. It's going to take all of us and it's going to take a sustained effort. But, as Margaret Mead, an American anthropologist said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. It's an inspiring thought as we all strive to build communities that are safe, nurturing environments for our children to grow up in. And you know, that attitude of curiosity and listening that comes with ACES, what happened to you rather than what's wrong with you? is absolutely central to driving that people-centric, compassionate approach. I'm sure you're going to hear more on these themes later today when you hear about all of the existing good work that's going on across Scotland, including the NSPCC's place-based work to prevent abuse and neglect and govern, or LinkUp's powerful work with the strengths and skills and lived experience of people living in your house or lease. We all know that children's health depends on the environment in, that they grow up in. Communities across Scotland are key to tackling adverse childhood experiences, to empowering and supporting people who've been affected by them. It's crucial that we listen to and work with people affected by childhood adversity. And it's growing awareness and change in societal culture overall that's going to lead to a significant, positive and sustained change in children's experiences and outcomes. Everyone here in this room is part of that culture shift. And crucially, you'll all have your own thoughts, your views and a wealth of experiences of what it means to work in and with local communities to ensure that children are safe and supported in those communities. I'm sure that today's event will help us to share that experience and provide inspiring space for learning and sharing and reflecting with others. Improving the life chances of our children, young people and adults who have had the toughest start in life is the most important thing we can do. Together, we can all ensure that Scotland is a place where we grow up loved, safe and respected so that we realise our full potential. Thank you.